Hello everyone, welcome back to another little riding video in the field with Mr. Woodster, looking as handsome as ever, even with his scruffy plaits that I haven't tied it up and brushed for weeks and weeks and weeks now. <laughs> but shh, moving on from that. <laughs> um, so I did a little bit of schooling out in the field with him today. Um, not done a ton of schooling this summer actually. I feel like uh, maintenance projects have kind of like overshadowed the riding a little bit so I, I have not really done that much with them um, but I've done a little bit and we didn't do too much today so we probably did about 10-15 minutes in total obviously I've edited bits out where it's a bit dull and boring but we did about sort of 10-15 minutes of schooling walking trotting um, and as with all my schooling sessions I just start him out pretty relaxed I just let him have a little amble around and stretch and get loosened up um, I always try to encourage them there you go lovely stretch there look I always try to encourage them to have a really good stretch um, at the beginning of a ride just get them using all those muscles um, Woody does enjoy his stretching the only downside with Woody is that he does somewhat lack in forward motivation as you can see here Oh my goodness, he was dead to my leg for this ride. Like, Woody is, I mean, he's a fairly laid back dude, um, except when he's, you know, having a psychotic Woody meltdown moment, then he's not laid back at all. But for 99.9% .9 of the time, he is so laid back, he's so lazy, he's so chill. I always say he's like a stoner hippie dude, like he just wants to amble along and smell the flowers and look at the butterflies and there's no real haste in him, bless him, as you can quite evidently see here. Like he's even falling over his own feet where he's like, yeah, I don't need to pick him up that high. And again there, <laughs> like what dope. <laughs> Oh, bless him. But I like to just let him do his thing for a few minutes. And I, I I try to gradually like pick up the pace a little bit while maintaining the stretch. Um, and I'll quite often do like a trot and a canter like this as well before I pick the reins up and start collecting them a little bit. Um, I did, however, uh, get to a point in this ride, which I think is the next little clip coming up. So I get to a point where I'm like, do you know what? He's just really ignoring my leg. And yeah, I went and actually picked up a stick that I had, it actually happened to be a long lunging stick that I just had out in the field from where I've been lunging a couple of days previous or the day previous, I'm not sure. I have a habit of leaving things out in the field. It's not good. <laughs> but I was getting a bit fed up with him ignoring my leg and he was really, really ignoring my leg. So I grabbed the lunge stick. Um, I, I don't use sticks on my horses. Like I've got a giddy up rope that I'll kind of like flap at them. Um, it doesn't hurt. It's just kind of like a, a donk, if that's even a word that makes sense in this context, but it's like, you know, I, I don't like using a stick on them. It's just, it's just, it's just not very nice, really. Um, so it's not for use. It is purely for flapping. Um, and as you can see, he's actually picked up the pace a little bit now. So uh, I did mostly sitting trot. So using the treeless saddle with him today and, oh goodness, my sitting trot, like my riding full stop is just pants. It really is pants, oh goodness. Um, but yeah, the trailer saddle, you can do rising trot in it. Um, you can do rising trot on it quite comfortably on like straight lines, but I find trying to do rising trot in the field where you're doing uh, tight turns and maneuvers and things, I was finding I was having issues with my legs bashing into that gigantic pommel that's on that saddle. So it's kind of like a half Western style saddle. It's got a very big pommel up front. Um, and yeah, I just, I wasn't getting on doing rising trot in the field with it. Um, so I have made my peace with that and I do pretty much mostly sit and trot when I'm schooling him in it, um, which is great practice for me because my sitting trot was always a bit pants and I mean, it's getting better. It's, it's, it's not the best. It could be worse. I've, I've definitely had worse sitting trots in my, in my time. And it is especially difficult on him. I find it a lot easier on Nelly. Um, because she's much more forward going and she's actually got a really smooth gait as well. 
Um, I find Woody has got quite a big pace. Like, he almost feels like a big warm blood to ride. Um, I don't know any other way of explaining it. And I feel quite a lot of movement in the seat when I ride him. And it's just, it takes a little bit of a while to settle into it, especially when you're doing sit and trot. And the other problem is obviously the fact that he's very backward thinking. So I struggle to kind of like relax into the trot when I'm doing sit and trot with him because I'm constantly having to remember to like keep egging him on because as soon as I stop asking him for forward movement he stops um dead in a split second it is absolutely remarkable how good his brakes are um but yeah that, that makes it a bit more difficult as well um I'm not beating him up here by the way there was a horse fly on him hence he was swishing his tail um yeah really bad horse flies at the moment uh so Nelly has actually got quite a bad infection um Kind of like on, on one of her stifles at the moment from a horse fly by that went nasty, but you'll see that in an upcoming video. Uh, but yeah, they did give us quite a lot of trouble today. They kept landing on him, they kept getting under his belly, and he's really very sensitive to fly bites. Like he hates insects. Um, but anyway, I thought we were looking pretty good here. Given how little we've done um, schooling wise, we've done like loads of hacking and stuff, we've not really done much schooling. I actually thought he looked pretty good here today. So I was actually quite chuffed with him. Um, we didn't do too much though, like I said, like 10, 15 minutes, um, and then I decided to move on and do something a bit more childish and fun. So I put my lunging stick down and I've gone and picked up my sword. And you know what? He loves doing this. Um, I don't know if it's because maybe I get excited about it and the horses pick up on it or if it's just fun for them as well as for me, but both him and Nelly seem to really enjoy the whole charging at the target while I whack it game. Um, I, I can't explain it. They just, I mean, look at him, look, he's like, you ask him for a canter and a show ring and he's like, oh, if I have to, okay. But as soon as I came around that corner and I looked at that target, he was like, oh yeah, let's go. Like I didn't even have to ask him for the canter. He just went. Absolutely amazing. I can't explain it. I can't explain the psychology behind it. Um, but it's just, they seem to love it. We had a bit of a horse fight problem here again. Oh goodness. I felt so sorry for him. Um, they kept just, they kept landing in places where I couldn't see them or reach them. So normally if I can see one, I'll like, I'll swat it and whack it off of them. And then we carry on. But I couldn't see it on him. He was clearly upset. Um, I think I end up hopping off in a minute. I think I got off of him twice, two or three times actually, during this ride to get horse flies off that were like right up in his groin. Like, oh, can you imagine having a horse fly biting you in your groin? Oh my goodness. I mean, I've, I've only had a few bites myself. And they're horrible. Clearly we got over it and we went for another little charge there. <laughs> he just looks so happy doing it. He really does just look so happy doing it. And I have fun doing it as well. We got a few good whacks on it today, actually. He's he's finally getting the hand of his distancing. Oh yeah, there you go. I gave up and hopped off of him now. Yeah. It was definitely under there. Um, yeah, see right up in his groin right up there and yes that is me squishing it into the dirt to make sure it's definitely dead because i don't want our little monster coming back and biting him again oh, they're just evil like what even is the purpose of a horse fly does anybody know what their purpose is i mean they just suck blood and then lay more eggs and then bite more animals like what's their purpose in the ecosystem i i don't understand kind of like fleas and ticks like what exactly is their purpose in the grand scheme of the universe I, I don't get it I really don't get it but anyway they exist we have to deal with them oh so got rid of the horse flies hop back on him um so we did uh we did the pal training probably did about another 10 minutes I would say we were out there for a total of ooh, a half an hour ish thereabouts we did a fair bit of walking and resting in between stuff um but yeah he just he just loves this game i i mean he's upset because there's another fly on him now but there you go i point the sword out off he goes 
he just gets it. Like, how do they get it? Is it is it something like genetic? Is it just do they remember from from hundreds of years ago being war horses or stuff like this? Is it in their genetics or something? I don't know. I don't get it. But he just he seems to get it. He's. I mean, either that or it's just it's an easy exercise for him. I mean, all they have to do is run in a straight line, and they like running and they like straight lines. It's easy. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but. I don't know, he loves it. And we've got another flipping horse fly. Another one. I can't remember if I got this one or not. See, the other thing with this is, um, I think there was a horse fly on him here, but I do sometimes wonder if he's playing me a little bit. But I, I mean, look at his tail swishing. I don't think he is playing me. I think there is something upsetting him. But he is very clever in that if he learns a method of getting a break, um, I, I'll let him stop or I'll hop off of him or whatever. He'll keep doing whatever he did to get that break. He's very, very smart at learning how to get out of work. Like, so, so smart. Um, so I did wonder if he was having me on a little bit, but I don't know. What do you guys think? He does, he looks genuinely upset there, I think. I think something is nibbling him. Either that or he's just got a sore bite from the last one. Um... Oh, he just looks so good. Look at him go. Look at that. <laughs> okay, he kind of bronked on that one. <laughs> yeah, we lost it there. That was epic. Like, that was a seriously badass battle charge. I was well impressed. I mean, obviously, we were miles away from the target. We're still training and all of that, but... That was awesome. That was so cool. Do you know what I would love to do? I would love to get involved with either some kind of competition or get involved with some reenactor groups, some demonstration groups, anything like that, so that we could do like mounted combat stuff. I really want to do uh, mounted archery with these guys as well, and I really want to teach them to do jousting and everything. It would just be so much fun to go out and do that stuff, like demos and things like that. It would be, oh, that would be such a dream come true for me. Like, honestly, I'm not going to lie right now. If it was a choice between doing that, um, like doing reenacting and, and, and jousting and all that kind of stuff, or doing dressage, I'm not going to lie, I'd, I'd pick the the charging around with a sword in my hand game over the dressage. Being completely honest, I'm such a big kid, aren't I? It's really bad. I mean, I love dressage too, but if I had to pick, it would definitely be swordy, chargey silliness. <laughs> it's just, I just love it. I absolutely love it. Anyway, that was pretty much it for this session. I've probably waffled absolute crap at you guys for like 15 minutes. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's not good. Anyway, yeah, that was it. Time to go now. See you next time. Bye.